Charlie and Fonda Patterson share a common love of Aspen and have contributed much over decades. They came to this special town from very different beginnings. Charlie Patterson was born Karl Schanzer in Vienna, Austria in 1929, an eighth generation Viennese. His father, Steve Schanzer, and his mother, Eva, were early skiers in the Austrian Alps in the 1920s and 30s. Charlie's interest in architecture has its roots in Vienna, where as a child, Carly, as he was then known, and his family lived in the Werkbundzeitlung, an experiment in modern housing, some of which were designed by Charlie's uncle, the renowned modernist architect Adolf Loos. Gave me a good picture of my future in architecture because these houses were all modern and uh, on the cutting edge. Charlie and his older sister Doris led a happy and privileged life in Vienna. Charlie remembers driving in the countryside in his grandfather's elegant touring car. But after the Anschluss, when Germany annexed Austria in 1938, the family fled Vienna to their grandmother's house in Pilsen, Czechoslovakia. After Hitler occupied Austria, we moved to Czechoslovakia with my grandmother's. It was a very interesting time. But then Hitler invaded Prague and it became clear that the family's lives were under mortal threat. Steve arranged for the two children to flee, first to Paris and eventually on the Strasnaver, the last British ship to touch the shores of unoccupied France, en route to Australia. My father had worked for years, and my grandmother, to get us out of Europe. Charlie was just nine years old when he and his sister were adopted by the Patterson family of Brisbane. They burned their Austrian passports in damnation of Hitler, cutting the Nazi swastikas from the corners of their passport photos. Back in Europe, their father Steve escaped from an army camp in occupied France and bicycled to freedom, eluding the Nazis across Europe. His extraordinary journey is documented in Escape Home, Charlie's memoir written with his daughter, Carrie. After eight years in Australia, and with the war now over, Charlie and Doris were reunited with Steve in New York where Charlie worked as a field engineer, and the family revived their passion for skiing in Central Park. It was a very happy time. My father looked at a map and he said, you know, Denver is the gateway to the Rockies. That's where you want to go if you want to ski some more. In 1949, Charlie came to Colorado. He first heard about Aspen after inquiring about an Aspen leaf pin on the jacket of an attractive young woman in A Basin. And I asked her, what is that? And she said, oh, it's a, a great new resort called Aspen. Charlie slept his first night in Aspen in the Elks building, next to the billiard table. And that first winter, he worked as a bellhop at the Jerome Hotel. I spent uh, the rest of the winter skiing all I could ski. And it turned out I was the youngest instructor in 1952. Charlie's lodging career started when his father Steve joined him in 1951 to help manage the Holiday House, where Charlie spent most of his days on the ski patrol. Together they cooked fabulous meals with just two pressure cookers. Charlie bought three lots from Leroy and Martha Waterman under Shadow Mountain in the West End in 1949. He built a cabin in the style of the time with salvage materials from around town. Some of the logs for extending the cabin were cut in Lenado with the Strong Brothers. The Jerome had some leftover lumber from the first pool that was being built in Aspen. The draft in 1953 put Charlie's Aspen plans on hold for a couple of years, but with letters of recommendation from his ski school boss, Friedel Pfeiffer, Charlie was posted to Camp Hale. And uh, started teaching ski to special forces, never shot a rifle, otherwise we were with our skis or our ropes. With his military service completed, Charlie went with a friend to visit Frank Lloyd Wright's Taliesin in Wisconsin. The experience was to change his life. When I saw Taliesin, I felt so good about that place that I decided really I should be there and learn architecture. 
Encouraged by former Taliesin apprentice and Aspen local Fritz Benedict, Charlie received a fellowship to study at Taliesin and designed his ideal ski lodge. The Boomerang Lodge used innovative techniques and the name was meant to be near the top of the phone book and to encourage guests to always return. Well, I can remember the first time I went into the Boomerang and sort of reeled around in uh, amazement at all the angles and wonderful uh, energy that was going on in every detail. Uh, windows in crazy places, uh, the way that you flowed in and the shape of the pool, everything about it, the fact that it was all sort of cantilevered at these angles, uh, told you right away you were in somewhere pretty interesting and special. I love the place. The Boomerang Pool, with its glass wall, was featured in Life magazine and people from across America sought it out. In the summer of 1968, the Boomerang needed a desk clerk. I went to the Boomerang to apply. After speaking to her a few minutes, I said, you're hired. I was born in Mason City, Iowa. My father was a minister and my mother was a teacher and I had a number of homes as a child. I went to a number of different schools. My first stop when we would move would be to find where was the library. I've always loved books. It was at this library that I remember getting in trouble because my sister and I rode the elevator without permission, but it was worth it because up on the second floor was a hallway filled with reproductions of Grant Wood's artwork. This was such an eye-opener for me as a five-year-old because here was someone who saw what I lived with and what I was growing up with. He saw it, but yet he saw it in a different way. In Lamar's, one of my friends and I had a civics-type project where we as 15-year-olds, and we filed with the Justice of the Peace to have a raid on a local bowling alley, which was known to be breaking state laws. And that was they were serving alcohol without a permit. It was not allowed to serve what was called liquor by the drink in Iowa. We were called before the city council for a commendation, but I think they just really quite surprised and didn't know what to do with us. Then went to Des Moines. I was chosen to be a page in the Iowa State Legislature. It was at that legislature that the law was changed. Pretty thrilling thing for me to see how it evolved. Colorado had been part of Fonda's childhood and she dreamed of returning while studying at the University of Iowa. I always loved Colorado and I was pretty sure that one way or another I would get myself back here and to remind myself of that I had a bulletin board four years through college and I had a little Colorado picture down in the corner and I got a degree in social work so when I graduated in June of 68 I headed out here Fonda fit right into the busy life at the Boomerang Lodge with both Steve and Charlie, and soon she was dating her boss. We met in June, and we were engaged in uh, the following year and married in April, I might add, the day after the ski lift closed at Highlands because Charlie didn't want any of the ski instructor hullabaloo that might come with the longtime bachelor finally getting married. She was the first really natural girl that I'd met all those years. She was very, very honest, very capable. Charlie and Fonda have two daughters, Carrie and Jenny. Dad just wanted to ski all the time. I mean, he was a ski instructor for 17 years, and uh, he's a fabulous skier, and he's really interested in powder snow. My mom grew up doing a lot of camping and a lot of trips in her youth and then dad grew up skiing and then on, in Australia living in the outback and camping so I think both of them had really a lot of love for the outdoors and that probably was one of the reasons they loved Aspen so much that it was so available to us. 
The Pattersons ran the Boomerang Lodge for a total of 56 years. Charlie was a member of the Aspen Lodging Association and the Aspen Chamber and Visitors Bureau, as well as the Rocky Mountain Ski Instructors Association. For many years, he was also involved with the Aspen Music Festival and School. Eventually, he took leadership roles at all of these organizations. Influenced by her parents' lives of service across the state of Iowa, Fonda has always been involved in numerous local nonprofits. I think my first involvement with the community was at the Aspen Community Church. The minister who was serving there was in trouble because he had a soup kitchen for what were called hippies. This was someone who was trying to do something good and he needed support and I got involved. The recent restoration and preservation of the community church was driven to a large extent by Fonda's efforts. The community church yard sale was an Aspen fixture for many years in the 1970s and 80s. And at our peak, we were making $5,000, this is in the 70s, in two and a half hours. Other projects like the creation of the Triangle Park Playground for local kids, leadership of the board of the Aspen Country Day School, and her long-standing board work with the Aspen Center for Environmental Studies all reflect Fonda's love of education and the environment. Considering that ACE started with uh, a vision from Elizabeth Pepke and her love of the outdoors and her early childhood education that she had experienced, it is nothing short of remarkable. It's, it's just a marvelous organization. I'm so proud of them. So my father's lineage, which was full of inventors and engineers and architects, they converge <laughs> in our family with my mother's history of activism and social justice. I, I love that there are these two strains that come together and I can see why my parents are such a great match. And, and that's been part of their success, both as a couple and as entrepreneurs and as community uh, leaders. I was asked to join the board of the Aspen Music Festival because Charlie had served and served and it was time for somebody else from the Patterson family. And it was important to have people who were local business people going out and talking to other local business people about why everyone needed to be supporting the music festival. Charlie and Fonda have been committed to the Aspen Country Day School and the Music School, and as a reflection of their appreciation of the shared campus, they gave the Patterson Commons. Charlie and Fonda have continued for decades to make this unostentatious contribution to our culture in Aspen. Uh, they haven't missed a beat for 30, 40 years now. Fonda has continued her lifelong passion for books at the thrift shop in Aspen. Polly Whitcomb and her group were being so kind in allowing me to come in and organize books. Well, we have pre-Fonda thrift shop days and post-Fonda thrift shop days. It is now like the finest bookstore. She has things alphabetized in, in categories. She is so clever at spotting a valuable book. It would not be the same place without her. And it's kind of amazing that one, it's been running that long, two, that it's all volunteer, and none of it would be possible if the people in Aspen weren't so generous. I settled here because I felt Aspen was a special place. There was a real pioneering spirit, so we are an amalgamation of what really early America was all about. So the spirit is in Aspen is, is so very special. It was only when I came to Aspen that I realized that I had been looking at a picture shot from Red Mountain over the Aspen Institute, over the music tent, to Shadow Mountain and to Aspen Mountain. It was my home before I knew it was gonna be my home and I'm so grateful that I've had the chance to live somewhere for 50 years to be able to be part of a community instead of just being a visitor to a community, which is what my childhood was. I've never known two people who were so dedicated to Aspen and their love for Aspen. They're passionate about what they do, and it's, it's just 
amazing. You know, it's funny, I, I hadn't sort of verbalized or tried to verbalize how I feel about the Charlie and Fonda. But I guess I really love them. What a privilege to be talking about Charlie and, and Fonda Patterson and congratulations to them for all of their decades of commitment to this community.